Hi, I'm Kathy Scholl, here to tell you about an exciting new pilot project of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Introducing innovative new technology for bridge construction. The method is the geosynthetic reinforced soil integrated bridge system called GRS-IBS or simply GRS. The pilot project came about through WSDOT working with the Federal Highway Administration on the Everyday Counts initiative, along with research done by engineering staff of the University of Wisconsin-Madison and UW-Milwaukee. In line with WSDOT's mission of achieving cost-effective and efficient innovations, the goals were to explore bridge design construction methods that are quicker to complete, cost less, and use common tools and materials that could give local and state governments the option to use them for such projects. In the spring of 2012, the Wisconsin DOT, along with the Federal Highway Administration, or FHWA, and the University of Wisconsin, hosted a construction showcase event at the site selected for the pilot project, bridge replacement at State Highway 40 over Hay Creek and Chippewa County. State and local road officials from counties and municipalities, consultants, contractor and academia personnel had the chance to see a GRS installation for themselves. We'll look at scenes of the construction event and we'll hear from WSDOT experts from the Bureaus of Structures and Technical Services. First, to explain more about the project is Bob Arndorfer, WSDOT Foundation and Pavement Supervisor. Wisconsin is one of the first states in the country to explore GRS technology and its benefits. We looked into a quicker and more cost-effective way to replace smaller bridges commonly found on two-lane roads. Everyday Counts is an initiative by FHWA to accelerate the implementation of market-ready new technologies such as GRS. This GRS technology has been shown to be an effective method for replacing smaller single-span bridges over low-velocity waterways. To help facilitate GRS deployment, FHWA has developed a comprehensive design manual to guide the design of this system. Construction begins with the installation of a geotextile wrap granular foundation at the base of the GRS system. After this is completed, the GRS abutment construction proceeds with the installation of a horizontal row of modular facing blocks to set the perimeter. Next, a layer of compacted granular fill is placed to the top of this block row. Then a layer of geotextile fabric is placed over the block and backfill. This process is repeated in horizontal layers until the abutment reaches the required design height. A 60-year-old bridge on Highway 40, chosen as the pilot project because it was scheduled for replacement in 2012, was determined a good candidate for the demonstration, as William Oliva, Chief of WSDOT's Structures Development Section, explains. And we're here at State Trunk Highway 40 uh, looking at the uh, implementation of our GRS abutments. As you can see in the background, they're uh, constructing these and they're uh, really quite an advantage over our uh, conventional abutments in some of the applications in that it minimizes the types of equipment that you need on the project site, uh, like pile drivers and things to support cast in place concrete uh, substructures. We uh, anticipate the uh, construction time to the, of this type of abutment system be a lot less than a conventional pile-driven cast-in-place in that these uh, abutments should be built in a matter of a couple of weeks. We anticipate this technology to have just as much longevity as our conventional cast-in-place type abutment. There is about a 20 to 30 percent savings in overall structure costs when uh, you're employing the GRS technology. The roadway approaches leading up to the bridge will also have uh, some GRS uh, technology underneath them. So uh, if there's any settlement of the approaches, it will also occur in the superstructure. And we don't anticipate a lot of settlement, but the, the advantage here is if there is any amount of settlement, it will occur together uh, with the bridge and the approach, helping to uh, create a situation where we don't have that bump at the end of a, a concrete bridge. We realize that this might not be the solution at every site based off of things like stream bed scour, things of that nature. However, uh, we feel that there will be a place for this type of technology in our inventory and we're looking forward to employ it at a number of locations, not only state trunk roads, but potentially local roads like town roads, county trunk highways, things of that nature. In comparison, geotechnical engineer Dan Alzamora of the Federal Highway Administration 
talks about traditional methods and also how GRS technology provides advantages. Conventional approach would have been to put the uh, bridge foundations on piles, on deep foundations, uh, and, then, um, and then the bridge would have sit directly on the deep foundations. They, could, they can do phase or stage construction so that they could close one side of the road at a time. It, it just takes a little bit more of an effort to do that. Uh, but uh, this, this type of construction uh, is, is done fairly quickly, so the, the, the reduced construction time helps in keeping the road closed less than you would normally have to close it. As you've seen, the GRS design and construction processes are really quite simple and similar to typical retaining wall procedures. Consideration must be given to the type of superstructure which will be built on top of this system. After completion of the GRS abutments on this project, a cast-in-place concrete slab superstructure was constructed on the GRS mass. Geotextile wrap layers were then built into the approaches to join the bridge and the roadway, eliminating the bump often experienced at the end of conventional bridges. Other types of superstructures can also be built on top of the GRS system, including precast bridge deck elements or deck slabs supported on girders. When the concrete cures and the road approach work is finished, the bridge is open for public use. As we've seen, the geosynthetic reinforced soil integrated bridge system may be a successful cost and time-saving option for designers to consider when planning the replacement of a bridge. There have been close to 50 bridge abutments constructed around the country through the GRS-IBS process over the last five years, and studies monitoring them have shown they perform well. University of Wisconsin-Madison and University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee engineering students who observed the construction process of the Highway 40 bridge are monitoring its performance over time. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation encourages designers to explore constructing more bridge abutments using the GRS technology and is looking for additional candidate project locations. To learn more about GRS IBS technology, visit the Everyday Counts page of the FHWA website. WISDOT has information about bridges on the department website at www.dot.wisconsin.gov. Thank you for joining us.